Hi, everybody. It's Connor. So if you're seeing this, listening to this, it is because I decided to split this episode up. So uh, this is part two or whatever, the next episode. And uh, this is our review of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, We chose to put it out second because it's already been in theaters by the time the Furiosa review came out. Furiosa was fresher, made a calculated choice. We also talked about this one second, so seemed like the right choice. So uh, anyways, this uh, continues after our review of Furiosa. Now we're talking about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you later. Yeah, apes, baby. Apes. Kingdom. Uh, I'll kick this one off with a funny thing. I saw a meme that was uh, like a password thing where someone typed in apes and, or ape and it said not a strong enough password and then went ape, ape, <laughs> ape, ape, ape. And it said good password, ape together, ape together strong. strong. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Well, that's uh, that's what they say, isn't it? Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, in these movies, at least. Do they say that in this movie? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, good. Well, it's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. My family. I will find them. I will bring them home. To survive, remember your strength, your compassion, your mercy. Why do they hunt her? She knows the human secrets. I have a name. May. I know where they're taking your clan. You chose a human over an ape. This was a human place. It is not yours. It is now, isn't it? The elders did not tell us everything about this world. Your bend for your king never. Okay, I didn't see this. You two saw this. Yeah. Uh, so I will. I'll. I'll give. I'll give everyone the facts, and then I'll pitch it to you guys. Um, this is uh, directed by Wes Ball, whose name is familiar. What else did you direct? Wes, the Maze Runner. The Maze Runner. All he's done is Maze Runner films, and I've never seen them. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Um. Great. Well. Uh. And uh, written by Josh Friedman, and this is. A continuation i'm guessing yeah the fourth installment of the of the new planet of the apes franchise um so yeah we've got uh, owen teague freya allen kevin durand is in this movie peter macon william h macy and uh this has made a lot of money good for it um so uh, how it says many generations after the third movie. Okay, so this is a, f- a fair amount in the future. So we got a whole new cast of characters. We got a whole new setting. Uh, all new shit going on. Dustin, go. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, like you said, it takes place many years, many generations after uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, um, and we're introduced to a new ape uh, village, um, which our protagonist Noah is a part of. Um, Noah and his friends. Um, who I believe are Suna and uh, the last one. Oh, I can't remember his name. Naraka? Um, no, uh, Anaya. Anaya. Um, yeah. So, so uh, it, we're introduced to this new trio of of friends. They're like adolescent apes, and um, it's on the eve of a ceremony where the apes in this specific village um, partner with an eagle, and that kind of becomes their like you know 
partner uh, throughout life. And so um, uh, the three uh, characters are trying to find eggs that they will hatch, that will become their eagles. Um, and uh, they stumble upon some crazy stuff uh, that's brewing in some neighboring ape villages and um, and it tears their world apart. And so um, it, it then sends uh, Noah on the quest to um, uh, get revenge and uh, and leads eventually to another ape village led by the evil uh i say evil but you know proximus like a, 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 di a dictatorial um proximus caesar is his name um and um yeah man it so so it, it's a lot of this and it's kind of like a road film he's on the road he's encountering different characters in different scenarios on his way to um proximus caesar's camp and and um yeah, man. Um, I, I eventually I get so I gave this four stars, I think, in my ranking of the apes, the the current apes uh, franchise. I would put this just below Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but probably above Rise. Um, so with War being my favorite, I think. Um, and um, yeah, it's um, it, it's a good movie. I, I think ultimately it, it's a good movie in its own right, but it will be proven to be better or worse, maybe um based on the sequels that it sets up um and this so in that way it's a little bit like rise where rise was good in its own right but it's because it set up the other two movies for success um that it kind of retroactively becomes even better um and so i'm hoping that kingdom becomes even better as we progress through time with you know our protagonist and and get to know um this tale the way that we knew caesars um and um and yeah i think it, it's a it's it's a well-made film um the apes you know we all know this right like the apes in rise looked great the apes in dawn looked great the apes in war looked even better somehow and like this continues like this is still like the, everything looks fantastic and um it's a combination of the motion capture and the the um, the animation that sells this right. Like there was not a moment in the film that I felt like these apes weren't real. Um, and to me, like that's a huge selling point of this film. This film looks better than most, maybe all current CG films. Um, it's such a good looking uh, effect, and um, and even when you put it next to live action real non-performance capture actors um it's it holds up it's fantastic um and um so that i think weta is still doing the uh, vfx for this and so rightfully so they're the best in the business it seems and um i i enjoyed everything about this andy circus came back as a consultant for these actors doing the mocap and um and it shows um he was always so fantastic and um and so even though um this isn't as good as Dawn or War. It's a still a thoroughly enjoyable film. And coming from somebody who really loves this franchise as a whole, um, maybe I'm biased, but I thought that this was a really good film and um, and I found myself enjoying it um, as I was watching it. And I was trying to be like a little more critical of it, but I, I still found myself just kind of like, along for the ride. And there are some things that I think, and we can talk about them that, you know, I, I don't love as much as I love some of the other films, but it, it, I think it still holds up as a solid piece of work and a, and a really good addition to this franchise as a whole. Um, I liked it a good bit. Um, I, I've liked all the, the, the new apes films, uh, starting with rise. Um, I do think that conversationally it does, I do think that you and John probably are more into them than me. Yeah. Um, I, and I think it's because um, this era of the, of the storyline or like the implied storyline is what I find more interesting. Mm. Um, so I, that's why like rise kind of felt like a movie that just had to be made because it was what kicked off a story that was much more interesting than its story. Yeah. Um, so like, I'm just really surprised that Rise was even allowed to be like the first movie that got made. Oh, uh, yeah. 
when you look at what comes after it. So um, it's so this un- season- Planet of the Apes like. Yeah, and it's also like it feels like a prequel, but being told first, and it's like, hey, yeah. shit. Um, yeah, and that's not to say I think it's a bad film. I think that it's just like when you stack it up against these other films, it's like, why bother watching that one unless you really like a James Franco performance or something? Like, yeah. like that's not to downplay um, Andy Circus or anything like that, uh, especially because like what I he's the heart and soul of those first three films. Um, they made you emote very strongly from from what they achieved, like as a as an art form. Um, and uh, the reason the the re- the immediate reason I knew that this film was going to be an, a good one um, is that like I kind of felt that, but even more so for this new Noah character. And I think it's because he's he interest introduced him with all the tools that they, they've learned over these past films. But he his character is of adult age or you know about to have a ceremony to become an adult but he's entirely um he's entirely uh you you root for him because he's so innocent like there's nothing yeah. you get the idea that like his his life has been idyllic without much controversy or um, struggle or anything like that and uh um just the fact that right out of the gate he was a really strong character um anyway uh I thought all the eight characters were great. Um, I liked not recognizing actors and stuff when I looked up their names and things like that. Like, mm, yeah. I don't think there's really a uh, stunt casting of any kind in this film other than like, you can't even say William H. Macy. He's not a huge actor. Yeah. This girl who played Siri in um, The Witcher is not a huge actress um, or anything like that. So that just I kind of felt like, oh, and then they gave a, like a, not a no name, but like a, really i guess risky direction um job uh to this uh west ball yeah uh which i don't think this movie was like amazing by any means it does calm me down i think i said this in the text chain that like of all people he's getting selected to direct a live action legend of zelda film Mm. which like as soon as that was announced like all of animation twitter and everybody in my industry was just like we're going to murder this man um, <laughs> because everybody wanted it to be uh, animated and everything like that. But so, so you know, in a industry that is like allergic to risk, um, I know that this was a very big, huge known IP. Uh, I just thought it was kind of nice that like I saw the cast list and did not really think that there was like uh, any name that was just selected because it'll get viewers and seats. Yeah. And that's because I think they had, um, the correct amount of uh, uh, trust in the product that they have on their hands. It's the best. I, I'd rather watch this type of work um, over like the Avatar um, films. This is almost entirely CG. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of like location photography and stuff like that. But I, this is so much more engaging to me, and I don't really know why. I can't really put it into words. But like, um, I liked watching and emoting through characters that were crafted on screen for me mm. uh, in this context, but I do not like it in the Avatar films. I, I couldn't tell you why. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, story-wise, pretty simple. Uh, none of these have been overly uh, uh, crazy complex story um, you know, plots or anything like that. I think the weakest link in the film and the thing that probably knocks it to third third position in the films for me um is that uh the the female the the teenage girl character is just really just not not well conceived at all um i don't think it was terribly well acted um she's crying all the time and i didn't really understand it uh i'm getting into specifics now but uh to finish off my summary um i thought it was a good film i would recommend it um i think it's a good first start for the director if he's you know able to continue to do these films um because he's already starting at a better point than um i feel like rise started at so if this is an indeed a trilogy i'll probably see him yeah i so i agree with you i think that um a couple things one yes the the female character nova is um 
is yes, she, she she's not well well written, and and I agree with you. It almost feels like she is a couple different characters, and they weren't sure which one to make her be, so she's both of them. Um, yeah. and and so maybe maybe there's a version of this where there's two characters. I don't know. Like it, it just doesn't it it doesn't it doesn't gel. Um, so there's that. Um, yeah. I I think it just kind of felt like that character was just there to drive a plot forward, even if it was completely inconsistent with her prior decision making, her prior allegiances and stuff. And you could say she's duplicitous and stuff and like want to think of that as adding more layers to her. If anything, I just thought she was nonsensical. Yeah, I think I think it comes across more as inconsistent than anything. And like when you compare it to um, Jason Clark or Woody Harrelson or Gary Oldman's characters or James Franco's character, you you really start to realize how weak she truly is in that she she is only there to push story forward, but she's not there to like challenge the protagonist in any way or cause them to learn anything. Not really. I mean, vaguely, but not really. And um and there's there doesn't seem to be much of a thought behind and maybe I'm wrong, but there doesn't seem to be much of a thought behind what her role in this long term is going to be. Um, like, I, I'm not clear on it. Um, and I don't know that there's really even a hint like or at least not a consistent hint. Um, yeah, um, like she could just introduce, you know, spoilers she could yeah. just introduce that implied storyline at, at the end of the film sure and never and be disappear. mentioned again it could be because they might time jump or something yep. like that like yep and that's how little in a, of an effect that she had on i think all the humans overstay their welcome for beyond a, one film and that's why i think the su- series has done that so yep. well is it it had a handoff in war where humans yes. are no longer 50 percent of the story yes um and that's even more so now, but it's almost like they like lean so heavily into it as to put a human character on screen and not want me to really like have much to say about her. Yeah. And it, and it's strange because, um, yeah, she, she, she's there, but she's not, um, I don't know. Like the the other the other human characters like you would root for them and you you want them in some way because like with the you know they're paying penance but you you still yeah right exactly and but but she she's so unclear and I think that part of that too and like th- this is me like it, looking at, at maybe a negative on this is like West Ball comes from Maze Runner um uh this had a YA feel to it. Um, that I think is inescapable. And I think part of that may be the cinematography um, feels sort of YA ish at times. Um, but also I think it could be her presence. And I think that uh, like, I don't know how old this actress truly is. She reads young on screen. Um, and so to me, it feels a little bit like we threw like a version of Katniss in here that I'm like, I, you know, I don't know it, it to, and maybe the thought is like, well, you know, Noah is more is younger, more inexperienced than Caesar, so we have to have him paired with somebody a contemporary for him. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, he's got his group of three friends that you could see as the three teenage leads in a, in a YA thing. Like exactly, and I think I think having all of these young character leads, it does tend to like skew to like this YA feel that that. Uh, is is new territory for the for the the film but i don't know if again i don't know if i'm reading that into it because i know what west ball comes from and what his cinematographer comes from but like but i think it's there um and and so yeah there's that um i i will say like to your point about noah being a a well-crafted character from the jump um in rewatching rise i was surprised because i rewatched um, I don't know, five of these movies prior to this one. And, um, and, uh, in watching rise, I realized that Caesar really is kind of angsty and a little bit unlikable in that first film. Um, and, and it's not that he was a weak character. It's that, so he's like this young ape 
And he's like a cutesy toddler, you know, kind of character. And then like eventually he ages up and there's like a there's a time jump. He he's young. He climbs a tree in the in the redwoods. He gets up to the top and there's a time jump and he comes back down and he's, you know, teenager, teenage, you know, like young adult Caesar. And um, and almost immediately they're they're leaving the redwoods and there's a family going in with a dog. And Caesar kind of like gets angry with the dog and like, you know, like territorial or whatever. And they go to the car. James Franco puts um, uh, Caesar in the car and Caesar asks through signing, like, am I just a pet? And mm-hmm. and it's this this like angst that comes across in his performance. That's a little bit like, um, I don't know, like it feels like a teenager, you know, who's like rebelling against his parent. And then and then he gets essentially like shipped off to military school and like it, go over here now, child. And so he goes to this thing and then enacts this coup and, you know, they they escape. Um, but all of it starts to feel like he's acting out against his dad in a weird way, because like as things progress, he seems to get like more uh, closed off to to will. And uh, and and so by the time they escape, it does start to feel like Caesar's a little selfish or like he's starting this <laughs> this whole Planet of the Apes thing because he got his feelings hurt or because he was too immature to realize that he is different than a pet um, to will. And um, and so, um, yeah, I think. If you compare the two in their first films, Rise and and Kingdom, I think Noah's the better character. Um, but but the switch that Caesar makes between Rise and Dawn, where like we see this young Caesar who's a little bit rebellious and whatever, whatever, then we jump to him married, he's got kids, he's whatever. It's like now all of a sudden he's more measured, he's mature, he's um uh, a good leader, like he's actually leading well. Um, that jump makes Caesar so, uh, so fun to watch and and so relatable and so like I don't know compelling. That I really hope they continue that with with Noah because I think Noah is better set up in this film. Like it, it, it in other words, if Caesar starts at like a four and jumps to a ten. If Noah starts at an eight, he should be able to jump like way up and like surpass Caesar's level of, you know, compellingness. Um, and and I, I so I hope that that's what happens. Um, and I'm not digging on Rise. I'm just saying, like, comparatively, I think Noah's the better character in the first in their first appearance. It triggered something in me watching Kingdom and rewatching these movies where, like, I always knew I loved these movies and like, um I've seen I've seen all of them. I had not seen, as I told you all recently on the text thread, I have not seen Tim Burton's. I did watch it. Um, didn't love it. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, I, in fact, I'd call it the only bad Planet of the Apes movie. Um, but like for me, um, I, I went back, I rewatched the original and I rewatched Beneath. I just finished Beneath yesterday. And um, that's the one. Sorry, that's the one with like the the underground human society yes. of like yeah, yeah. like yep. weird religious cult or something <clears throat> correct about a nuclear bomb a nuclear bomb yes, yes. okay and yeah. and um and so i was talking to my brother about this and he was like you know it, it's weird that in kingdom you see these humans that can talk right like they're sorry spoiler alert they can talk and um and it seems like the last film would have you know led you to believe that all humans lose that ability Um, and I was like, but, but that's not true because like beneath always showed us that the humans continued to, to exist. They just went underground. And so, um, uh, I like where this is going. It it is, it's retreading the original franchise, but in a new and unique way. Um, and, and, and I kind of like, I don't know if I like it better, but I kind of like it better. And, um, you know, if memory serves and I've only seen all of the the original ones, one, one, well, I've seen the first one a couple of times, a few times, but like the, the other ones I've only seen once. But if memory serves like the Caesar that happens in in the original, the original timeline, if you will, 
and this season are very, very different. Um, but where we are now, we're still centuries or a millennia away from a millennium away mm-hmm. from Taylor coming back to earth. Um, so there's plenty of room. And I think West ball or the screenwriter mentioned, like they have plans for nine of these, that kingdom would have started a, a three trilogies. Um, I, yeah. I, Rick, I, Rick Jaffin and Amanda silver I, talked about making a third trilogy after this trilogy. I, and then another one after that? No, no, like a, the total of nine oh, films. Oh, I thought you meant nine more, and this was the first of not, oh, no. Oh, no, this, I, I, this is the I fourth. didn't read the article, but but I was under the impression, Hooper, that this was the first of nine. No, what I was okay, just reading was nine. saying, okay. was uh, let me find it, read the future, let me see. Blah, blah, blah. Rick Jeff and Amanda Silver also expressed interest in making a third trilogy of films, thus bringing the total of the Planet of the Apes reboot films to nine. Okay. Jesus. Well, so that's better, but like, my thought is like, I actually don't want them to get to the original. Like I, I, because once you get there, I don't know where you go. Like, like this is, like I said, this is kind of retreading some of the original stuff. So if you get to Taylor, where do you go from there? Like you have to come up with new stuff or you end up with Star Trek into darkness where it's like super retreading and, and watering it down. But like, um, I don't, I don't know, but, but here's what I'll say. Like th- this, this is the, the epiphany that came to me after watching these films in close succession. Um, I, in terms of sci-fi franchises, maybe this is my favorite one guys. Like I, well, I don't like star Wars. We know that that's out. Star Trek what, is is fine. They totally biff it on this one. They might. <laughs> they might. It is modern Hollywood we're talking about. But like, but I, I love I love this franchise. And for there to be 10 movies that are this good, minus Tim Burton's, it it's that's a that's a minor miracle. You you said sci-fi, but like it, this reminds me of how when we were talking about the Rocky movies. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, is there a better, like a more consistent franchise than this? Because what, how many, however many films this is, eight or nine films that are all really good, except yeah. for Brocky five. Yeah. Um, I think, I guess everyone gets one mulligan, the Tim Burton one. Sure. And Rocky five. Yeah. But like, yep. yeah, like it, it's, it's rare for so many installments of a, of a franchise to be like to, to hold up over time. And also yeah. just to, to be consistently good. Sure. Yeah. You know, totally. I, I stand by that. I, I Rocky Rocky is one of the best franchises that exists. Um, the most consistent anyway. And, yeah. uh, and, but, but this, this is really like Rocky's a crowd pleaser. Like if I ever met somebody that was like, you know, I just hate Rocky. I would not <laughs> trust that person in the slightest. But, but if somebody came up to me and like, you know, I really hate planet of the apes. I'd be like, eh, makes sense. Like, like, like I love Planet of the Apes, but if you told me you hated it, I'd be like, that's fine. You do yeah. you. H- Hooper, what were those? What were the numbers that this one did? Because like one of the points I wanted to bring up depends on the box office. Yeah. So this says the budget was 160 and it's made 300 million uh, okay. globally, I guess. Um. So one of the things that I think these, these films have going against them is that um, it's like whatever the opposite of word of mouth is like, um, hold on, let me clarify that it's you've either seen them and think they're OK to word of vent vent. fanatically into them. Yeah. Or uh-huh. you say, you know, the new Planet of the Apes film and someone goes, you fucking stupid or something yeah. like they they if someone hasn't paid attention to these films, they think that they are the biggest joke in Hollywood. Yes. Like they think it's like fast. And it's like. They think it's like yeah. Fast and the Furious yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, no, and it's, it's because un- until Rise, you kind of had to like follow that trajectory of those films to kind of get into them because everything before before that was just cultural references and, and about how goofy it looked in hindsight. Well, and they're so like, weird. They're, they're, they're so weird and they're so risky. Like, again, I just watched Beneath the Planet of the Apes. You would not end a movie like that ever. You know what I mean? I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm going to trust you. Do you want me to tell you? 
Sure. Okay. So at the end, so beneath the planet of the apes, they go down into the underground. They uh, run into the humans who still speak and they're, you know, whatever. They're religious zealots in this cult and they worship a bomb called the Alpha and the Omega. And uh, and they all like remove their masks at one point. It's really like Twilight Zoney and they're all like grotesque, you know, whatever, like uh, uh, irradiated human mutants and like uh, and they all speak telepathically. And it's like it's like so crazy. <laughs> Twilight Zone, whatever. And um, and Charlton Heston is revealed to be alive and he's like being kept prisoner. And uh, and they go to fight. And Dr. Zayas is like, uh Mankind must be exterminated. They are the epitome of evil and all they do is kill as the apes are killing all of the humans in sight. And then and then they shoot Charlton Heston and he's like sitting there with blood and he's like, you fools. And as he dies, he pulls the lever and 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 the bomb like starts up and then it cuts to black and a narrator goes, it was on that day that a small planet, a small green planet that orbits the yellow sun was dead forever. And he, 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 de they destroy the earth. <laughs> he, he pulls the trigger and the bomb blows up and they don't even show it. They just cut to a voiceover saying, <laughs> they ran out of money. <laughs> they ran out of money and a voiceover just goes, earth died. And like, <laughs> everyone's dead. And, and that's how the movie ends. And like, and then they handed it over to some poor schmuck and said, write a sequel. <laughs> and, and they're like, but the earth is gone. Like, how do I do this? And Holy crap. but like, you can't end a movie that way. And but they did. They were like, whatever. Who cares? Figure it out. Screenwriters and um, <laughs> sign yeah. a fucko. <laughs> I, I, I put in my letterbox review. I was like, this does mean Charlton Heston has the largest kill count in film history, right? <laughs> like he killed everybody. Um, and uh yeah, yeah, man. So that's how the end of the movie. It's so weird and random. And you would look at it. It feels so anticlimactic because like there's this big battle and then boop, cut to black, done. And and it's like you don't end movies that way. So I totally understand that. But like to your point, I was talking again to my brother. We had like a big conversation about these and why we love them and stuff. And and we were talking about I, I don't know other than John. I don't know anybody else that loves these movies. And I don't really know anybody that like talks about them so if mm -hmm. i say i saw planet of the apes i'm never getting a oh cool i saw that and i loved it and here i'd never get that and so it's like no one is watching these movies but um, apparently they're enough to be profitable and continue making more so like I, it's almost like is that why they're turning out good Maybe I have to imagine that the originals, I don't know this, but like I have to imagine those are, that original franchise is was really cheap to produce and they could produce yeah. them cheap and quick. Um, so yeah, whatever they all they're like, how many of them? Five came out. Five, in, within, yeah. The, yeah. Within the span of as many years. Uh, it was maybe about 10 years, probably. I, for, I think for right? what the, like the original film original may, maybe no um, it, was, it was within five was it within five Six, 68 70 71 72 73 wow okay so there you go um so you're right so five five films or yeah five films in five years five years that's, that's insanity and like i assume it was because they could make them really cheap and whatever they made back they made back and that's great yeah the budget for uh <laughs> the budget for uh, hold on budget for first planet of the apes was five million five point eight uh that budget say adjusted i don't probably that, that's I'm, I, that's probably not adjusted the budget for 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 beneath was 2.5 million like yeah. less than half the yeah, money because charlton heston they, was only in like two scenes and they've got right. the suits <laughs> yeah and they have the yeah. suits yeah two million for con for escape 1.7 for conquest yeah. and then the final one battle 1.7. Yeah. Yes. So, they also made less and less money. <laughs> as someone who I have only ever seen the original and it's been so long that I might as well not have seen it. Yeah. Um, all I know about those is pop culture references and every clip I've seen of them being goofy. Yeah. Looking, yep. you know, from my modern eyes yep. and all of their names of the films being goofy as hell and yes. like a marbles in your mouth. Yes. And yep. and so from a superficial standpoint, even the description of it 
uh even with cg these days and stuff like that like the the, the trying to tell someone that, like you're gonna feel things for an ape and then uh, a, a cg ape and then kind of feel weird about it for a movie yeah um all of that is going against it and so like yeah. when when they started naming this the series the same way with the same footprint and stuff i was like guys i i like the movies but like nobody else is understanding what you're going for until they're in the theater and that's a really hard sell yes it's it was also like really heady at the time like um so rod serling was a, a key component to that that original film and so it feels twilight zoney and whatever but like it was really heady and like that first film was was more was less about like dude stuck on planet of the apes and i have to escape from the the evil apes it was more about the uh what happens to uh, scientific progress when religious fundamentalism creeps in to a society that that's what that first film is about and and when you say that to like somebody like oh it planet of the apes is about religious fundamentalism halting the progress of science they're like what? I thought it was about <laughs> apes. I don't understand. And but th- but then but then you have to follow it up with and the second one I guess is about bombs are bad. And the and, and like the third one's about time travel. It's like it, it's it's so I like I don't know. It it, it tried to it, it was trying something. It, it feels to me like just like the best episodes of Twilight Zone, they were telling something important in a way that was like offbeat and you know and and so that's what planet of the apes was and that's why i love it it's a big episode of the twilight zone half that movie isn't even it doesn't even have apes in it it's just like dudes walking around in a desert and um and it's so minimal and so cheap but it's so good and um and and it's good for the the reasons like that it's smart and uh and and these newer films maybe they don't have as much to say uh it along those lines but what it does have to say is a lot about like leadership and the effects of war and you know like the the strength of the uh the village unit and like all of these things that i think we we kind of need right now you know um ape not kill ape ape together strong these are like we should just make those our our laws like right now like we need to just like do that and so it's weird because planet of the apes is just a weird thing where it sounds like the schlockiest you know people running from rubber suited monkeys kind of thing but it's actually trying to say something smart and uh, and i don't think that the general public can can like connect those dots that those two things can be the same um and and even if it looks better now it's still hard to tell them that th- this has an important message yeah and uh um, yeah. yeah i don't know if, if 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 uh if you were talking about the hypothetical of you um uh sharing mad max film with your dad the the prospect of me trying to get my dad to watch one of these films <laughs> is just as ridiculous because my dad is the is the type of person about chimpanzees and apes and stuff as soon as he sees one he just starts laughing like <laughs> it's been a thing like the, the stover side of the family my mom has been like it's really weird like there used to be a there used to be a sitcom not a sitcom it was some show about a secret agent chimp oh my it god was, it was called lancelot, lancelot link, link secret chimp lancelot I, link i used to chimp. i used to go to the distillery what? when we were in savannah and they played that above the bar so i'd like get drunk no and watch shit. that show yeah <laughs> So my what? dad and my uncle and like everybody on, you know, on they it's love that like shit. Like champs and tuxedos against a green screen, like surfing and doing weird seventies, like legit s- chimps or like people yes. in chimp costumes. No, they're legit chimps. Chimps. So it was, you know, horrible things were happening on that set. But yeah. Um, yeah. like, it's basically he's James Bond, but he talks like Barney from the Flintstone. Not Barney. He talks like <laughs> he Fred talks? Flintstone. Yo, they all talk. Do, how do they get the lip flap or they don't? Okay, okay, Dustin, imagine like Thunderbirds. Okay. But instead of puppets, it's monkeys. And instead of like, <laughs> that's the vibes that it has. Anyway, okay. my right. dad that just, just to show you, like he loved that show and he loved like laughing about it and stuff. And like, 
she, if if you were to like show him a screenshot of the Planet of the Apes movie, be like, ah, oh, that, that's probably a really funny movie, isn't it? And you're like, <laughs> no, it's not a comedy. No, Dad. it's sad. <laughs> it's like it's about like togetherness and about like division and and, and he'd be like, but it's got a monkey. In it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so anyway, I uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, uh, there are a lot of like merits to the films and stuff, but I think they're they're always going to be hindered by a certain part of the population just going like there's no damn. way that that is a real thing. Like, right, right. It, it's almost like by its nature, it can never be mainstream. And it, and it and it is so it can never be like the star, you know, if we're talking freaking Star Wars, it can never be the lowest common denominator form of entertainment of the time which is probably why they are still good yeah Yeah. sure yeah if they had mass appeal you know that that would be a script by committee it would have been a skywalk uh last guy what the what is that movie called (laughs) which one (laughs) the last one the uh rise of skywalker sure anyway that piece of shit um <laughs> they all are <laughs> that one in particular just felt like kind of the worst thing disney's ever done sorry that's saying something i yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about song of the south <laughs> <laughs> it's on record kellen thinks it's worse, worse than song of the south <laughs> I've never seen it. The 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 <laughs> disclaimer that that's on Disney Plus for 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 Rise of Skywalker is listen, we're sorry for Song of the South, but we're really sorry for this. <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave it on the <laughs> we're going to leave it on the streaming service because we think, you know, we think audiences should still have access to We think you're still going to watch it. That was still this much of a crime against humanity. <laughs> we're going to put three more three times more ads in it. <laughs> They apologize. Um, <laughs> they apologize more for films of theirs with people smoking cigarettes in them than they do for, for riot yeah. garbage. Yeah. Did do you he- headline did you, this just in? Kellen prefers Uncle Remus to Uncle <laughs> Owen. <laughs> um. Did you watch Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Dustin? Yes. Oh, okay, Kellen. Do you? <laughs> would you like to? Do you recall how it begins? Because you said they passed it off to the next guy. Um, after Charlton Heston destroys the Earth, do you remember Wait, how they get around? Are you just sitting there reading the Wikipedia synopses? Probably. Oh, it's time I'm, travel, I'm... right? It's time travel. Y- yeah. Uh, prior to the bomb, like, Zira like, and prior, Cornelius, Zira, Cornelius, and Doctor Milo uh, escaped Earth before it blew up. Yeah, and then they the the shock wave is so powerful that they try travel through time to 1973 to Earth. <laughs> Yes. And they and they become celebrities and and they give birth to Caesar. Um, <laughs> Caesar is their child. And so the first ape is theirs born yeah. in the 1970s. Yeah. Yeah. It's a paradox. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like the voyage, uh, not voyage home. It yeah. is. It is. I compared it to that recently because I was like at th- those films and Star Trek are so similar in that, like, as they as they progressed, they became a little more like comedic or like reveling in the, in the schlock of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so like, you know, the wrath of Khan is like deadly serious, right? So is the planet of the apes. And then like beneath the planet of the apes is a little bit like search for Spock. It's like, eh, it's a little lighter, but you know, whatever. But then like, yeah, it immediately goes to the voyage home and it's like, you know, Mr. Spock riding a bus and it's like, Oh, (laughs) I did a lot of LDS. Yeah, I did. here we are. I got to go find the whales. Um, but you can manufacture see-through <laughs> aluminum. What was it? The I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I, 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 I know that movie's loved. I, I've only seen it the once. I don't remember. Well, yeah. So I guess that was our hour long point about how these movies are hard to market <laughs> <laughs> super hard to market i my wife is so tired of me talking about planet of the apes though I, I she hasn't been watching these with me and i've I've now watched what seven of them eight of them no. within like a few weeks within a month of each other and and um she, the, the other day we were riding in the car it was quiet and she goes you're quiet what are you thinking about 
And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I, I said, I said nothing. And she goes, no, there's something. What is it? And you I know she's screeching. expecting me to be like, well, I was thinking about our relationship and I was thinking about, and I was like, oh God, I was thinking about the planet of the apes. And I was, and she goes, stop, it's fine. Don't worry. And I was like, okay. And then, and then the other day, <laughs> I think this is yesterday. I, I was with, I was with my son and we were, we were talking and, and she, um, she asked something and I said, uh, it, something reminded me of Planet of the Apes. And she goes, this is literally like, she quoted Mean Girls, which, which I, I also haven't seen a lot, but I was like, but the quote was something like, I guess Lindsay Lohan's character says like, I was obsessed with Regina George. And when I wasn't talking about Regina George, I was waiting for somebody else to talk about Regina George so I could talk about Regina George. And I was like, <laughs> yes, that's what it was. Because then like my brother texted me and he was like, hey, so I just rewatched Planet of the Apes and this is my new current ranking. And I was like, <laughs> and she was like, stop, you have a problem. And I'm like, I know I can't stop it. And then I texted her the other night and I was like, Hey, uh, the the toy company Nika is is re releasing its uh, Planet of the Apes action figures, and uh, I have Doctor Zayas, but I don't have Cornelius or Zira, and I think I'd like to have them. And she was like, "Stop!" And I'm like, "I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. I'm on a micro fixation right now, and it makes no sense." I think it makes sense to you, Dustin, and that's all that matters. <laughs> sort of. The, I don't know the, why I like them. Okay. The these uh, it's like those memes where it's like the couple in the bed, and it's just like. He's probably thinking, what he's about thinking about other yeah. girls. And it's like, yes. I gotta get those Dr. Zayas toys. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's gotta exactly get that what remote, remote control Dr. Zayas. It, when she asked me that in the car, what I was literally thinking about was, why don't more people like Planet of the Apes? And I was trying to, I was, <laughs> and I guess I was, I guess I was quiet for too long and, and gave my hand that I was deep in thought about the Planet of the Apes. But self-fulfilling prophecy like there we are dustin we might if you if you would if you would talk about it <laughs> less. shut up about it <laughs> next, <laughs> next next episode dustin's gonna be like yeah so uh sarah and i had to start up some uh Counseling. Uh, marriage counseling, counseling r- relationship therapy. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about the Apes. Dustin, well, how does that make I you feel? I have to show you an actual te- uh, message I sent to her on Instagram. <laughs> Wait for this, Sarah. Listen, apes together strong. Okay. <laughs> And when I start working that into my parenting, she's like, Dustin, I'm I'm moving out. I'm taking dash. I'm going to my parents' house. But but. Apes together. Together, Ape together strong. strong. Ape together strong. Ah, uh, man. When was Dustin, it? I, I'm, good, I'm just so angry. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Ape not Ape kill. <laughs> Ape not kill. Ape. Uh, I can't find it. Um, oh, here it is. I, I literally <laughs> sent her this. It's just a picture of Roddy McDowell on the set of Planet of the Apes. I don't know why I sent this, but I sent for Halloween one day. <laughs> Please. That's I keep trying I... to talk her. In. I've For years, I've tried to get her to, to do a full Planet of the Apes prosthetic on me for Halloween. One day I'll do it. But this is not that year. Dustin, I didn't know you had such a problem. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't have laughed at you. <laughs> When when you're sending when you're sending this to your wife like this is my style icon you have a problem. Oh my god! Uh, I just wow. I just got out of my Lord of the Rings re revamp re obsession. I think I'm, I'm in the just middle kidding. of mine. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm never out of it fully. It's fine. Maybe this will maybe this will follow suit and I'll never ever be out of Planet of the Apes. Who knows? Yeah, there will be another one in two and a half years. Yep, there you go. You'll be showing us okay. your your sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just apes. It's just apes. <laughs> it's it's that up on your shoulder is the atomic bomb, <laughs> the alpha and the omega. <laughs> you, you, you have memento mori. I have ape, not kill ape. <laughs> <laughs> wait, uh, wait, what is Caesar's symbol? What is it again? It's the window. It's, it's lattice, the little right? window. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get that across your forehead like you're Dr. fucking Manhattan. (laughs) Dr. Manhattan. Because he's got the what? Hydrogen? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You're going to get the Caesar Uh. symbol across your. No. Or like Iron Manny in your chest. chest. I like that. I just ape ape not kill ape. I just have a a full back tattoo. It's just Dr. (laughs) Zayas. Fully rendered in color. No, you tattoo his orange and brown vest all over your body. 
Oh, man. Give oh, yourself God. extra nipples. <laughs> oh. Oh, and that's boy. all a surprise. You like you 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 disappear for a week. You come back. Uh, Sarah, look. <laughs> I what now, a glorious I, day. What a glorious, what a glorious day. day. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm dying. <laughs> uh and it was on that day that Dustin. <laughs> The most insignificant of of, of humans <laughs> died. Was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ceased to exist. <laughs> oh man! All right, I think that's where we leave it. Yep. All right. Well, I hope hope, hope that works out, Dustin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just rendered my entire review inaccurate. Like everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, he's totally he's he's, he's, all, he's on his job. rocker." <laughs> he's he's on, I'm cool not radio. seeing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> If this franchise leads to that, good lord. But for real, the movie was good. Yeah. Story was it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. Indeed. All right. That's it. That's it. Sayonara. You fools. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas.